Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to So Much To Talk About. My name is Nabate Isles, and it is always a pleasure every episode to be able to bring you wonderful facts and viewpoints in the world of sports. And this is a special edition of SMTA, as I have my friend on the line, uh, college, of, uh, college football, college sports aficionado and expert, my Midwest correspondent, Mr. Paul Miyake, and we will preview the 2008 college football season in the FBS division. Hey, Hey, Paul, how are you today? Good, sir. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you. Stop calling me sir, my friend. You know, <laughs> I should call you sir, man. Ah, uh, much too kind, man. But it's uh, great to be on. It's a great time of year. You know, we got some great games this weekend. There were some pretty good games last night. So let's get started. That's right. We will get started. And and I want to actually go over our preseason because every year we t we have our preseason top twenty-five, and I want to get that to the audience right now actually so we have sc starting as number one now i know some ohio state fans out there will probably say why is it ohio state number one uh, they win the bcs game uh. but talk, <laughs> much love to ohio state though but talk, let's talk about why we have sc as number one well i think a big factor and sometimes with sc you overlook this part of their team especially because they're so prolific offensively is you know their defense is probably the best in the country right mm -hmm. now. It's the best defense that Pete Carroll, I mean, Pete Carroll has said it's the best defense he's had there so far. And Ohio State, I mean, they're going to have to score on the SC, and it's not going to be easy. I mean, Ohio State's a great team, and they have a great defense too, but, I mean, USC is absolutely loaded, and it's defense with championships, it's that cliche phrase, and, you know, SC's really got all the components defensively. Oh, that's right. And and they had pretty much three number one, uh, three first round picks, potential first round picks in Brian Cushion and Ray um, Ray Mayuga on uh, you know and the linebackers. And and that's going to be a key factor when we talk about that matchup against Ohio State. Beanie Wells against those linebackers and Taylor yeah. Mays too at, at free safety as well. Yeah, as yeah. A potential first round pick. Yep. So let's talk about Georgia. Matthew Stafford and Noshawn Moreno. Those guys, we're going to talk about them as possible Heisman guys later on. Uh, but, but you know, how prolific can they be together for Georgia to, to, be, uh, to win not just the SEC, but to, to win the national title? Well, Georgia Georgia's absolutely loaded. I think, I think they are the number two team in the country right now. I think... For Georgia, their schedule is going to be really tough. I think that's the only thing that can really um, potentially set them back from, from getting to the title game. I mean, their schedule is brutal. I mean, yeah. We'll talk about them going to Arizona State later, but, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, add Auburn, Florida, LSU, Tennessee, <laughs> Alabama. Um, of course, they play Georgia Tech every year. Yeah, and um, Georgia Tech defensively is, is solid. Looks like the South Carolina defense is pretty good, and they go to South Carolina uh, right before Arizona State. So, mm -hmm. I mean, really talented team. Stafford's a terrific quarterback, probably maybe the top prospect along with Cullen Harper from Clemson, and Moreno's a legitimate Heisman candidate. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about later. So That's right. Um, We'll see how Georgia does. That's right. Florida does not have a tough non-conference schedule. Basically, I mean, they host Hawaii and they host Miami, Florida, and they at Florida State. I mean, basically, their their tough games are within conference, so they can um, they could possibly win that SEC East over Georgia. Yes, they could. The schedule gods were kind to them this year. Um, Florida, of course, we know about Tebow. They are just. Uh, I, I like Florida this year. I think. I think they're underrated defensively. Um, Brandon Spikes in the middle, middle yep. linebacker. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we'll see how Florida does. Another thing with Florida is like their 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 matchup with Florida State isn't going to be as tough as in previous years. Yeah. So it isn't it helps them. But it'll be it'll be interesting though. That that could be that would be Bobby Bowden's last game coaching florida state it will be very interesting <laughs> in dope campbell you know yeah and of course the world's greatest cocktail party is going to be a big game <laughs> that's, right. Jacksonville. that's right for sure i think you and i need to get credentials for that 
Oh, we should. We should try to do that one time. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, I got to say, Oklahoma, Missouri, back-to-back. Both these two teams are, you know, I mean, Oklahoma perennial Big 12 powerhouses. Missouri, this is the first season that they're starting in the top 10 in God knows how long. So, um, I mean, can I mean, and they have a tough schedule, Mizzou. They, they open against Illinois. That's a really intriguing matchup. You got two, uh, two real prolific quarterbacks, both, you know, have some Heisman billing, uh, Juice Williams and Chase Daniel. It's going to be a really great matchup. First, that's one of the best early season matchups you'll find. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No question about that. LSU's defense, I mean, they are. They have three potential first-round picks themselves as well. Ricky Jean-Francois, Darry Beckwith, and Tyson Jackson are potential first-round picks, all three of those yeah. guys. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're sort of like USC, how they, they can just reload and bring – bring guys in to fill what would be just glaring holes for a lot of programs. I mean, Les Miles does a great job in the recruiting. Mm-hmm. Rounded out the top ten, we have Clemson, West Virginia, Texas. I mean, you know, Texas people are sleeping on Texas. Colt McCoy, he's only a junior, and he definitely learned a lot last year from his struggles with injuries and inconsistency. I think Texas definitely can make a run. And they, they host Missouri. They play Oklahoma once again in the Red River Shootout. You know, so they have a favorable schedule to help them get back to the top. Yeah, Texas Texas should not be overlooked. They, they have just too much talent on both sides of the ball. McCoy, McCoy is going to be really good this year, I think. And like you said, their, their schedule does favor them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and and then round, and then for between eleven and fifteen, we got so much to talk about. So we're gonna run through a little bit. Between eleven and fifteen, we have Illinois, Kansas, Texas Tech, Tennessee, Auburn. Now Texas Tech, Graham Harrell, that he's putting up prolific passing numbers. I mean, over fifty seven hundred yards last year, for him. He he really is. He's got a great guy to throw the ball to in Crabtree. You know, you and I were t- just talking about how it's just it's amazing how. Texas Tech can just got, put guys in there time and time again, year and year, you know, again, just putting guys in who can just light up the scoreboard. It's amazing how they can, you know, find guys that fit, fit that system. Right, right, absolutely. And, and, and to be able to, I mean, you have Cliff Kingsbury, B.J. Simons, and then, of course, Harold Falls, and then Wes Welker was part of that system as well, yeah, you know? Yeah, right, that's and, right. You know, it's just it's crazy. It's really crazy with them. I mean, and and they but they have a tough schedule there. I mean, they're at Kansas, at Oklahoma, hosting Texas. They're at Nevada, who's very very underrated team. So, they, it's it's definitely going to be tough for them if they can win. If they can come out and win ten games, that can really help them. They can possibly sneak into a BCS, but but definitely make a New Year's Day bowl like last season. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Like you say, their schedule is absolutely brutal. Yeah, and what do you think about Kansas, Mark Mangino? Can he repeat that magic? It's going to be interesting. They're going to be, they're going to, definitely going to have a bullseye, you know, on their backs this year. They're not going to sneak up, sneak up on anyone. And the, you know, it's it's a tough conference. Big Twelve is it's probably the best uh, bunch of quarterbacks in that division. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, and, with, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's going to be. I think I think Kansas could be in for a little bit of a down year. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, and, and they and they go to South Florida, na- you know, on national television, which we're going to talk about. Tennessee and Auburn, fourteen to fifteen. Tennessee, they have a chance hosting Florida to 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 get revenge on last year's uh, shellacking they experienced at the swamp. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I think Tennessee could be interest- an, inter- an interesting team. Um, if John Crompton, Jonathan Crompton, can come in and just sort of manage the game and not not lose games. He's got enough around him. He's got a Adrian Foster, the terrific running back. Lucas Taylor had 73 receptions last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got enough on both sides of the ball to, to kind of be a sleeper team if they can, uh, you know, navigate through that tough schedule. But like you said, they do have Florida at home, and they did they did make the SEC East title game. Mm-hmm. That's right. People forget about that. 